So what I have loaded right now is a corridor design file that would kind of represent a bridge section. This is a conceptual design that we're doing. We're actually not going to get into too much detail, but it does allow us to kind of show some different options, different ways that we can you know, add that detail to our model that we might want. Um, so like in this situation here, I have um, a mainline corridor that's run. And then, so I have a, a divided road template that's drawn. And then as we come into this divided road, we get to this bridge abutment and then it swaps over to a bridge template. And then at the edge, the end of the bridge, it swaps back to a roadway template. So if we move, zoom in here on our 3D model, we can kind of see that a little bit better. We can see that situation where we have our divided road coming in. Um, we have our, our bridge that gets created. And then after that edge of the bridge, it starts back. So this is all contained inside of one corridor. And these are just done by multiple template drops and template transitions and whatnot. So that's, that's the corridor that's creating this entire thing. So for creating our bridge abutment, we could use this type of situation, but you know this is really going to be a very specific situation where we have a perpendicular bridge. Okay, well, in most situations, we know we have a skewed bridge. Uh, so we're going to actually have our abutment is going to be on a skew at this section uh, at the beginning and the end of the bridge. So we need to be able to model it along that section. So same rules and ideas would apply to this situation where we can come in and create our abutment, but we're going to kind of show this a little bit more from a skewed bridge standpoint. So I'm going to jump over to a different design file. I'm going to open up our skewed bridge DGN that's included. And what we have modeled here is we have the roadway is a one continuous template drop, uh, and that goes through the entire section of the bridge. And we're going to clip out the information for the bridge. Okay, so we're going to clip out this information from this corridor in the section that the bridge is going to be displayed. And then we're going to display our bridge that's in a different design file that has its own corridor. So We've just split the corridor into a mainline corridor, and then the bridge is going to be uh, extruded along a section of that. So what you see in the 2D here is I have the main mainline corridor. Like I said, it goes all the way through this section. So it's one continuous corridor. And then we have these clipping shapes. So this clipping shape is actually on the skew that we need our bridge to be created on. So it's going to be at this angle here and then it's going to come along and then it's the a this is a paralleled angle um, at the end of the bridge so we are going to trim out this information from the design okay so we'll go ahead and do that and then we're going to go jump over to the bridge and then we'll kind of merge that information together by referencing the bridge into this file I'm just going to start off by going into corridors i'm going to add in a corridor clipping reference Okay, so I want to add in the corridor that wants that I need to be clipped is our mainline corridor, and our clipping reference is going to be this section, which is going to be our bridge. These other shapes here are representative of the clipping shapes that are going to be clipping the bridge, because our bridge section is over alongside here where we have the overlap, and so these two shapes are adjoining to one another and that way we can create our bridge that perfectly you know butts up against our main corridor so i'm going to reset to finish that and let that clip out our mainline corridor so you can see that it's taken that skew and it's clipped it out so if we move over here into 3d we can see that it clips it out and this will carry over into uh, our volumes as well so it you know, depending on the volumes that you run, it will honor clipping shapes. So we've clipped out the main corridor, and I'm going to use, um, I have the same shapes. These shapes are actually in a, a referenced design file. So I'm going to jump over to a different design file that has our bridge. 
So this is going to be the DGN that has our bridge section in it. And like I said, so this bridge section um, is just a, a corridor, and I needed to make sure that it overlaps these sections because this is what I'm going to be trimming out. Okay, and that way this part of the bridge is what's going to be maintained. This part of the bridge is going to be clipped. Okay, so we're going to do the corridor clipping, and we're going to clip this corridor, and then we're going to select our elements that we're going to be used as our clipping references, and then reset. And once that's done processing, you'll see that it's now clipped the bridge at that same skew along this section here. So once we have that trimmed out, I'm going to jump back over to our, our main corridor. That's our skewed bridge section. And then I'm going to reference in our bridge DGN into this DGN to show how those two join up together. So I'm going to come into the References dialog, and we're just going to attach the design file that is our bridge, and we're going to set that to be Coincident World. And you'll see that it brings in our bridge section, and if we rotate this, we'll notice that the edge of our skew of our bridge matches up with the corridor. Everything we've done so far has just been a little bit of kind of clean up and manipulation to our corridor. And now we'll go in and apply our apply our linear template that's going to allow us to create these side slopes around our abutment here. I want to start off by working in the 2D. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate this around. We'll close out our references. We don't need that right now. And what I want to do is I want to build a element here that we can uh, it, we can extrude our end condition, just our two to one side slope around this section here. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that when I'm when I'm placing this geometry, that it's going to solve our end condition. Okay, so we're just placing a two to one side slope. It's going to solve that perpendicular to the the line that we create. So if we were to just place it from this point of the edge of bridge to this point of the edge of the bridge, you know, we would just get a section that's going to be around here. We we're going to miss all of this transition here from the side slope. So what we need to do is we need to include this bend and we need to include this bend. So when we apply our template, it can place perpendicular templates and then sweep around this angle and then run across the abutment here sweep back around this angle and tie back in. So we're going to start off by creating some horizontal geometry. And I'm just going to, instead of doing geometry, I'm just going to do some of our drawing tools. And then I'm going to featureize that element when I'm done. So I'm going to place a smart line. And it tells me to input the first vertex. I want to make sure that I'm in my 2D model. So let's just go ahead and start there. So I'm going to start placing this smart line. So I want to make sure that I'm snapping along as I'm placing these points. Okay, I'm going to come here to this edge of the bridge, and I'm going to turn on the intersect snap so I can get to this intersection. Okay, and then so I'm just placing horizontal, and so since I have this is a this is a linear element, so I'm just going to extrude all the way across the road. So I'm going to come all the way across here to this intersection point. Turn on my intersection snap again. And then we're going to back up, up our corridor. So we've placed that horizontal geometry. So if I cycle through and I select that line string, you'll see that we have that line string that gets created that's going to be you know, utilized as our as our geometry for our linear template. So I'm going to make sure that I assign a feature definition to that now. So I'm going to come into the geometry and then under the standards, I'm going to set feature definition. So I already have that set. I'm going to set our feature type to be linear and I'm going to select the feature definition to be our bridge abutment. So I'm going to just left data point. 
to accept this selection. And then if we look at this element now and we look in the properties, you'll see that now our feature definition assigned is our bridge abutment. So we've created our 2D geometry. Okay, so this is the, the horizontal of where that's going to be placed, but we need to now create our profile. So we need to get our elevations of this element here from our design. Okay, so what I'm going to do is open up the profile model of that element. Okay, so our, this is our BA, that's our bridge abutment. And I'm going to utilize this tool up here that's the Create 3D Cut. The Create 3D Cut is going to take a cut of our 3D model and display it inside of our profile. So I'm just going to do this placement as corners, and then I'm going to make sure that I en encompass uh, a large enough area that it can include all the information from the 3D model. Okay, so I'm going to place those points. And then I'm going to utilize the graphics that are displayed here. We can come along this section here and place our profile geometry um, to create our, our vertical profile. I'm going to come into my vertical geometry commands. I'm going to come into lines uh, and I'm going to place complex geometry, complex by PI. I want to make sure that our feature definition is also set to a bridge abutment. And I'm going to start by coming to the beginning of this element. Um, so, you know, we have this extrusion that's our 3D extrusion along our 3D cut, but our alignment doesn't start until we get to this black section of our profile view. So I'm going to turn on the ability to snap to this element. Because this 3D cut is a, a reference from our 3D model. Okay, so with this view active, let's go into our references. And I want to make sure that I turn on my snaps to that reference. That is our 3D cut. That's that 3D cut shape. And now I'll be able to snap to these elements. So if I come in and do complex by PI, you can see now it does my AccuSnap. So I'm going to come in and I want to make sure that I do the key point snap here. Okay, and we're going to get it to snap onto that line. I'm going to come and place the first point. And then for simplicity, like I said, this is conceptual. So I'm just going to jump all the way across. Uh, we might would, you know, our bridge abutment may would actually come down and across. Uh, and then include the the V ditch in the middle uh, for the drainage. But I'm just going to shoot straight across here and get to the other side of the road where it's intersecting. And this is this point here. Okay, so we're going to get to that intersection point, and then we're going to get to the end, and then we're going to finish that. So now I have a profile that's created that's running along the surface okay so it's running along that surface of this corridor and then it shoots from this point across and then it backtracks up a little bit further so i'm going to set that active and as i set it active uh, you'll notice in the 3d that i'll get a 3d element that gets created um, because i'm assigning an active profile okay so you see that red element and 3D gets created now. Now that we have our horizontal and profile geometry, uh, we can apply our template, our linear template, that's our two to one side slope to this element. All right, so I'm gonna come into model detailing. I'm gonna apply linear template. And then for my template, I'm gonna just select my end conditions, uh, I'm going to be in a fill, and I'm going to do just the two to one fill. I'll say OK on that. I'm going to locate the element. OK, so I can select this in 2D. I can select this in 3D. OK, so in 3D, it may be a little bit easier to select. So I'm going to select it in the 3D model because I can see it. 
And then we're just going to accept our options here. Okay, so we're going to lock it to the start. And then we're going to lock it to the end. And then I want to make sure that we select the correct direction. Okay, so I'm going to come to the outside do a sweep angle, and that's the sweep angle around our corners. And then you'll see that it applies that linear template to that element, okay? So if I select this, you'll see that it comes from the beginning across our bridge abutment, and then it comes back across to tie back in, okay? And you'll notice here that we do have some overlap. So there will be some additional cleanup because, you know, this side here, this may not be a, this is a two to one slope where this right here is actually going to be more of a three to one or a four to one slope that's tying into our existing ground. So we would do some kind of transitions or clipping around this section as well. But we can do that type of cleanup later. But if we look in the 3D model, you'll notice that we have now our two to one slope. It sweeps around this angle and it actually does go underneath the corridor. Um, this existing ground does include a section there, so it's kind of hard to see as it moves around. But in the, in the plan, you can see it creates that element. One other thing we can kind of do just to clean this up is to clip out, um, you know, as we have this two to one slope here, but we also have our end condition from this corridor. So we have a large area of overlap. So we could just come into our corridors, add in another corridor clipping reference. And then the clipping reference is going to be the bridge abutment. Okay, so we'll reset that. We'll let that process. And you'll see that this triangulation along this edge is going to clean up a little bit. And so now for this corridor, it comes to this point. And then for the mainline corridor, it's actually clipping out the terrain from that section. So if we hover over the corridor, yeah, you'll see that it doesn't include information there. So we get rid of that, that overlap data. And you'll see that it ties in that information around here. Um, it triangulates to that a little bit better. If we come up, we rotate our view. And look at this from the other side. Okay, you'll see that it kind of creates that two to one and then it tapers in. And like I said, we'd still do a little bit of cleanup, but it gives us a pretty good uh, conceptual model of that bridge abutment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.